The first project we're going to look at is our OpenStack identity service, and this is nicknamed Keystone. Keystone is the who are you and what do you want to do service. That's kind of how I describe it. Firstly, it provides authentication, which is the who are you portion of this phrase. Next, it goes and checks for your authorization. So we know who you are, but what is it you want to do? And are you allowed by policy to do that? It includes a lot of different components within an OpenStack environment. Not only users, which are fairly obvious, but our services are also measured in Keystone for different authorization and authentication, as well as the endpoints in our environment. Think of endpoints as each service endpoint. Sometimes they're co-located on the same physical or virtual machine, but each service itself is a service endpoint. This allows the scale out environment to be able to spread broadly and horizontally. Outside of traditional authentication, Keystone also uses tokens in order to authenticate and maintain your session state. This is very important because it's that extra layer to confirm who you are and again, carry it out throughout the environment so that you don't have to authenticate at every single step of the way. And let's take a look at exactly how that happens. Inside our OpenStack identity environment, we're gonna have a workflow. Now, let's just say my friend Jens here. Jens runs MyCyclingStore.com and he would like to be able to do a number of different functions within his OpenStack environment. At the very least, we're gonna talk about the Keystone and the compute environment. The first thing that Jens has to do is send his credentials into the Keystone environment. This is the username and password combination which is going to authenticate him to see if he is who he says he is. Once the credentials are confirmed, Keystone creates a token, and that token is then passed back to Jens and carried out throughout the environment, so that when he makes a request into the compute environment, the token is actually sent with the request. Then the authorization kicks in, this is where Jens's rights are checked against the current policy in the compute environment. This all comes out of the keystone and where those policies are maintained. Once he's okay, we allow Jens to perform his authorized action. Now, in this case, Jens was the system administrator of our mycyclingstore.com environment, so we kind of give him the whole keys to the kingdom. But you can do granular controls even below that. Now, when we talk about Jens and his MyCycling Store environment, what exactly do we mean? And this is where we talk about tenants. A tenant environment is something you're going to hear commonly in cloud discussions. And we talk about multi-tenant. Tenants are logically separated containers within your OpenStack cloud. Tenants as a general term are used when we talk about all cloud environments. You'll notice I've used an apartment to describe what it is. Effectively, this is the greatest way to describe it. There is a single cloud environment, but within it, there's a number of different tenants that only have access to their specific area. They're all in the same environment. They don't know what theirs looks like compared to others, but all they need to know is that they have access to their particular unit. And within that tenant unit, they can do whatever they want. Multi-tenancy within Keystone is great because it's a secure way to lock down authentication and authorization for each tenant environment without affecting any of the other tenants. Tenants can be given global objects to be able to use so that we can create certain objects that can be shared among all tenants. This is a great efficient way to run a cloud environment. We'll talk about what those objects are and different types of things that can be treated globally. Even below that though, tenants can also create custom objects within their tenant environment. Imagine that one tenant wanted to create a bunch of custom images 
but nobody else is going to need to be involved in that, then that's fine because they can do that within their own tenant environment. And this is done because of the granular security controls that we can deliver using OpenStack Keystone.